Hey there, my fellow enthusiast. So I gotta know, has this ever happened to you? Dun 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 dun. Uh, what's that? <laughs> you. What me? No, your bike. <laughs> uh, my bike. Yeah, it's mine now. Ridden to death. Uh, what? What? Huh? Uh, no! Ugh. If so, here's a number to my shrink. He went to U of O though, so... Quack. Anyway, back to reality. This is a quick rundown of my top five reasons your e-bike might be dead, or you think it is. Number one, bad connections. This is the most common issue and the easiest to fix. Now, most of these connections are out in the open, so they become easily dislodged, especially if you fold your bike a lot or stick it in and out of vehicles transporting it. Now, unhooking one of these connections won't kill your bike outright. As a matter of fact, you'll probably get an error code on your screen telling you what's up. It's the internal connections that can actually shut you down and leave you scratching your helmet. Now, this is the one that stopped me cold one day and threw me for kind of a loop. It's that little pigtail from the brakes to the controller. Now, you wouldn't expect that to kill your bike, but it's actually a built-in safety feature. It not only supplies power to the brake light, but it also is tied to a kill switch which cuts the motor when the brakes are applied. Now most of the connections on these bikes are real beefy like these Gillettes or XLRs or these super beefy power connections. Yeah, for some reason on my bikes and probably yours, this all-important kill switch connection is made via these light gauge wires all pinned into a pigtail. And I had one of these little pins come loose out of there killing my bike right in the middle of a ride. Now when I dug into the controller compartment, I didn't even notice it at first because the wire was still in the pigtail, the pin had just come loose so it wasn't making connection. I didn't figure it out until I started probing. Now of course, once I figured it out, it was an easy fix. I just tune the pin, stick it back in the pigtail, plug it in, all good. So if your bike is cutting off intermittently or dies altogether, check these pigtails. It might be your culprit. Or it could be number two, loose or damaged brake levers. Now this issue won't necessarily kill your bike, but it'll cut the motor and maybe kill you. Okay, maybe that's a little dramatic, but it is annoying and it could happen at the worst time like when you're trying to shoot across an intersection, so it could be dangerous. Okay, so we all know that the brake levers are also a kill switch for the motor. You hit the brakes, motor stops. Makes sense. But what you might not know is it's a hair trigger. So let's say the return spring on your brake levers is a little bit worn out. So much as hitting a bump could close that circuit and cut your motor. Now I learned this after a minor crash on my H6 Max damaged my brake lever. Oh, I think I damaged my lever. Oh. So if in the middle of a ride your motor cuts even though you're holding down the throttle and pedaling, give those brake levers a smack to the full open position and if your motor cuts back on suddenly, you found your problem. Now the brake levers on these walkies have an adjustment knob, so tightening mine up pretty much solved my problem. But if yours don't have that adjustment knob or they're just really worn out, it's probably time to replace them. For the next one, we're diving back into the guts for bike killer number three, the fuse. So this problem mostly happens in bikes with dual batteries that have that fusible link between the EQ and the controller. Now these fuse holders come pre-installed on these EQs by whatever vendor the bike company gets it from but they are less than reliable. I pulled out fuses that were a little bit warped from the heat and some of them were charred from being a little off kilter, but they were such high amperage that they didn't snap. Now I swapped out those fuse holders for these insulated jobs. I actually highlighted a little bit of that in my last video. Now, if you don't wanna go that far and perform surgery on your bike, I totally understand, but at least carry an extra fuse with you and whatever tools you need to get into that fuse holder. And you might want to throw on a little bit of dielectric grease on that fuse, your connectors, even your battery terminals. That'll go a long way from staving off problems like that. If you don't want to get a big can like this, you can just get those little packs of light bulb grease that they sell at the auto parts store by the counter. Same stuff. Speaking of battery terminals, that segues us into problem number four. Big ticket item, your battery. 
Now, if you had to experience any issues on any of my bikes battery-wise, uh, Walkie provides us with these UL certified Samsung cell battery packs. And while lithium is really great, has a good lifespan, you can flip it up and down, shake it all over, um, and they're protected by these BMS boards, they can still be a little fickle, mostly due to extreme weather conditions, either extreme cold or extreme heat. But the main issue I find that people have with these is directly related to storage. Now, of course, all batteries are gonna discharge a little bit over time if left unused. But if these battery packs are left in the bike, in the garage for months at a time, and they're stored with a low charge to begin with, they might discharge to the point where they ain't gonna fire up. Now they call these things battery packs for a reason. It's a bank of cells. And all it takes is for one of those cells to go below like two amps or so, that BMS will not send out power or fire the battery up in order to protect the cells. Now this might not be the end of the world. I'm actually curious how many people chunk their batteries or even worse, chunk their bike thinking it was crap. Cha-ching. Now, like I said, this has never happened to me, but I've done a little bit of research and it turns out you can revive these batteries. It takes a little bit of know-how and you gotta really get in there. Um, but the tools required are a hell of a lot cheaper than a new battery. Here's a video I found that walks you through the process. Now, of course, the best remedy for this is prevention. Keep those batteries stored at least around 80% full and definitely keep them indoors. And number five is gonna be a little controversial. Don't hate me, but it's fat tires. Now put your torches away. I'm not fat shaming. I love big fat tires on my e-bikes. All of them have them, but they do have their drawbacks. And I'm not talking about their weight either. I mean, yeah, they're heavy, but so's the bike and so's our butts. But once you get all that weight moving, it's really just not an issue. Inertia keeps everything moving, otherwise we wouldn't have these big long trains and giant box trucks. And that's the reason I'm always tinkering with the gearing on these bikes, just to give that motor a hand, help get all that weight moving. But even with the stock gearing, these bikes are torquey and they have no problem getting going. Low PSI, on the other hand, can put a drag on the whole works, no matter how fast you're going or how big your motor is. The reason I pick on fat tires in this regard is that they go spongy a lot quicker than skinny tires, and a lot more often too. Now low PSI is great in off-road situations and low speed situations, it's nice and cush. But if you're going fast with low air pressure, then you are making everything work harder. The battery efficiency and lifespan is gonna suffer big time. So definitely check your tire pressure often, especially with new tubes, especially with stock new tubes. They're a little bit thinner. It takes a few times reinflating them before they'll hold their shape. And it looks like they're fine. <laughs> and even if you do a squish test, you're like, ah, they're okay. Then you start riding and you got a lag. So check them often, get in the habit. Thanks so much for watching. If you found any of that helpful, do me a favor and slug that bug. In my next video, I'll be finally attacking the gearing on that H6 Max. See if we can get a little bit more pep out of it. And as always, I gotta thank Walkie E-Bikes, Tannis Armor, Cafferty Cyclery in downtown Nampa, and Ex Nito Helmets. Cheers. <laughs>